I see a lot of familiar faces in the room, and I did not bring slides, and I didn't come here to pound you with the facts about lung cancer, because we all know that it's the second most common cancer diagnosed, and we've heard many times how it is the number one cancer killer, but it has less federal funding and all those other things. And so I was sitting with my husband and my two kids last night, and I said to them, you know, what do you think people want to hear about? And my eight-year-old said that people want to hear that there's hope. So I looked up the definition of hope, and hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And I think that in lung cancer that really is happening. My husband said they want to hear about progress, and progress is forward or onward movement toward a destination. And what's amazing to me as the clinical director of the lung cancer program, I came down to Vanderbilt back in 2008 for a year, and much to my mother-in-law's dismay, I've never gone back. <laughs> <laughs> but being the clinical director of our program, I was looking, and in the last five years, we've had five drives at Vanderbilt in clinical trial that are now FDA approved. We have another seven drugs that are in different stages of clinical development that are close to FDA approval, and we've got another 16 drugs that are in trials for lung cancer patients. And to me, that's what's so amazing about what's happening with lung cancer now, because 10 years ago, this was not happening. More drugs have been FDA approved for lung cancer in the last five years than in the three decades before. And we know we're really cool because we've made prime time. We made prime time in two areas. Tammy told me last night she saw the Octivo or Nivolumab commercials on TV. And I know that there are some of you in here who are on Nivolumab. And back in 2009 was when we treated our first patient with lung cancer with Nivolumab in Vanderbilt. And it happened because of an amazing researcher, Jeff Sossman, who does runs on melanoma program. And Jeff came up to me and said, you have to try this drug. Hopkins says it works in lung cancer. So I said, fine and we started pe putting people on the study. And before Nivolumab even got approved, we had treated 70 patients with lung cancer with Nivolumab at Vanderbilt. And that just tells me how many more lives we've saved. I have folks who have stage four disease, like Tammy, who have been off therapy now for years because of drugs like Nivolumab. We've also made progress with all the molecular testing that we're doing. We're testing for things like EGFR, we're testing for ALK, and their ALK, made prime time because there was an episode of Brazilian Isles. I don't know how many of you watched that, but it's a detective show. And people are smiling. I don't know if you saw the episode where the husband killed the wife. And as it turned out, he killed the wife because she turned out to have ALK. And she was on Krizotna, but she was still alive three years later and he was hoping to collect her insurance. <laughs> <laughs> So I am super excited because we're screening more people at risk, we're screening people with histories, we're screening smokers, so we're detecting more early stage disease and curing more people. But even for those people who have stage 4 disease, I am so excited about the future and how many more people we'll see in the next few years of curing of lung cancer. And I don't think even five years ago there would have been an event with so many lung cancer survivors feeling good, with good quality of life, sitting together and having dinner. And I can only hope that 10 years from now, maybe we'll take up the whole of Gilda's Club or we're going to have to move to where the CMAs were. <laughs> 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 <laughs>